Okay, hi everybody. I think we're live. We are live. I need to hear about the sound before I go any further. So if somebody can just say yay or nay. Is it good? It says waiting for me. I don't know why. There we are. Here I am. Here we are. Here I am. I want to know how the sound is. Before I go any further, I would love somebody to say, yay, the sound is good. Is it good, Maritza? You're the first one here. We're making the not tuna recipe. I have the recipe out. I have a picture that I took years ago that is so beautiful. Do you see it? That's what we're making today. And so, I have my new mic on. Yay, it sounds great. I'm so excited. So what do we do first? Well, we tell, we tell you the ingredients. I'm going to list them below with the recipe. But I soaked the almonds for, can you see the, yeah, you can see this. I soaked the almonds for eight hours yesterday, rinsed and drained them, and kept them in the refrigerator overnight. And hello. And they're going to go in. I always smell them. It's funny. I like to give them a quick rinse before I... Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I took them out of the fridge, and they're good. So we have one cup of almonds that were soaked. Make sure I'm buttoned. Um, eight hours. Then we have one cup of sunflower seeds. And we're going to blend this to grind it down before we add any other ingredients. This is a recipe um, that I made because I grew up having tuna, and my mom made the best tuna fish. And this is, like, so much better. I don't even know what to say. So close your ears. Make it loud. Just so you know, we want it really fine. So this recipe, before I start, is going to last a number of days in the refrigerator, but you will eat it. So you don't have to worry, but I would say three to five days. As with everything, smell it before you eat it. I want to grind it pretty fine. It'll grind down more when I add the olive oil and lemon juice. Ooh. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we are going to blend in the salt, olive oil, and or coconut oil. I use olive oil. Today I'm using olive oil and lemon. So we're going to need to squeeze some lemon to have it at the ready because I love when it's super lemony. The recipe calls for like three lemons that I'm wondering if it really needed that much, but I think it did. You know, I could use my lemon squeezer. That could be nice. Okay, I want to measure how much I use, though, so you guys can have the recipe. Can you see? Everybody can see what I'm doing. This is a tried and true favorite. This is beyond exciting. <laughs> this recipe. This makes being raw so pleasurable because if you have a little glass tub of this in the refrigerator and you just take a dollop and you put it on romaine or you put it on a flax cracker or you just take a spoonful, it's so delicious. Yeah, I think I'll use about a quarter, ooh, about a quarter cup of lemon juice. Do you add a touch of sweetness? Yes, yeah, some people like their... Um, you know, and sometimes I add cashews. I might add cashews for creaminess. They, cashews make it a little sweet, and they make it a little creamier. But I think that I don't like my tuna fish sweet. I never did. But some people do have sweet tuna. <laughs> I don't know why it turns out sweet in normal tuna fish. Um, 
maybe some kind of mayonnaise, but this is no mayo. And okay, we're just gonna put these aside. Oh, they smell so good. <sighs> Miracle Whip, that's why. <laughs> Thank you. The Miracle Whip is what made people's tuna fish sweet. So I'm not accustomed to Miracle Whip, and I'm not liking my tuna sweet. This is savory. No, turn this up. But yes, everybody do it according to their taste. That's the fun of raw food, is you get to make it according to how you like it. So that was the juice of one, no, two. I'm going to do the juice of two lemons. And it's about a quarter cup. So let's just see how that goes. And if we add more, we'll measure so you have the measurement. Okay. So now it says three lemons juiced, and I only did two, almost two. So we know that we can have one more. <laughs> if my recipe is correct, we know we will add one more. We're gonna add the olive oil. Quarter cup. I think this thing is a quarter cup. Yes, it is. I do remember, I make a, a mayo, like a hemp cashew mayo, which is so good on top of this or with your that's so funny, Lisa called it. It's the Miracle Whip. What even is that? Okay, so now we don't need this here. And we added our olive oil. Let's add our salt. And our salt is two and a half teaspoons. Let's see if my recipe pleases me. Is this, you can't even see this copper. You can't even see what that is. I think it's a teaspoon. I'll use this one. You can tell I'm making recipes again for you guys. I don't need recipes. I just like to make it. But sometimes it's nice to have a tried and true recipe so you don't have to mess with it. Two, and I'll just do a half by eye. Okay. Two and a half. We can always add more. I, have, I wrote one small clove of garlic, but this seems monstrous, but I'm going to add it. One big clove of garlic. And, and then, did I want to add the garlic now? Yeah. And water is needed to get a good consistency. So let's add the lemon. And if we need to add water or lemon juice, we'll see. I'm thinking we're going to add cashews too. What do you guys think? Gingham girl. Hey, Robin. Okay, everybody close your ears. You ready? This looks so good already. So I will, I want to fold it, to get it, scrape it off the sides to get all the seeds. And yes, a dollop of cashew cream. You're right, Laura B. That's my hemp mayo or my cashew cream mayo. I think it's really nice. Mmm. It's super salty. But we're adding two cups of chopped celery. We're adding green onion. Um... And I want to add a few cashews, just a little. Look, I'll show you how much, just because I can't follow recipes. Okay. And it will need a little bit of water. All right, a little bit more cashews. I'm making a teeny lip. It's nothing. Um, yes, I, before earlier, before you guys showed up, I showed the picture of what the knot tuna looks like, and I'll show you at the end, obviously. So now I'm going to add there's a little olive oil left. Let's blend it and see. I don't think it needs water, actually. It's blended really nicely. Now it's time to chop. I want to eat it. 
It's so good. I want to, um, so we did use, just so you know, a couple lemons. It really depends on how big your lemons are, how juicy they, juicy they are. Juicy they are, so you have to do it to taste. Um, we definitely want lots of celery, and we're going to cut it down the middle. I like little pieces, and then we can just chop. I actually remember that I do it more than once. I do another slice down the middle. So I cut it in half and then in half again, little skinny pieces because that's going to make them nice and little for the... We'll see this in real time, how long it takes. I could have had all of this prepped, but I wanted to hang out with you guys. We could have been doing this alone and then showed up with my celery chopped and we're gonna get a cup because we wanna measure. We're gonna do two cups of chopped celery. Can you, please, can you guys believe I have measurements? I made a recipe book. I have about 60 recipes that are just sitting there in my Evernote. I think I never did it because I didn't have pictures and then I started eating cooked food. No, then I started eating food that was definitely less nut and heavy and then I started eating cooked food, and now since I'm transitioning, I eat mostly raw salad for lunch, smoothie for breakfast, and I was eating cooked food at night a lot, and now I'm just doing raw, maybe a little bit of cooked, a little raw fusion. So when you're transitioning back to raw food, you want to satisfy yourself with things like this at any time, really. Okay, so that's almost one cup. But we're not going to put that in the food processor. We want it to stay, like keep its integrity, its crunchy integrity. So this is going to be one cup. You can figure almost a bunch of celery. It's crazy. Okay. Okay, so that's our one cup. Ta-da. I'm going to get a bit out a big Paris bowl. And we also have to cut up the onion. We need red onion. And then we also need dulse. So you guys are going to have the recipe. I also posted on Instagram what you need to get. So let's put this in a big bowl. Mm. We'll do it in the clear one so you guys can see. I don't want that to cover. Okay. Let's put in our one. Is that going to be big enough? Yeah, that's going to be big enough. Does anybody have any questions while I'm chopping? How is the sound? I know you said it sounds good. This is a new mic that I hooked up myself, and I'm hoping it's really good. I may have to change the settings on the transmitter and receiver, which I did do, and I don't know if I did it so well. What is the point of dulse? Oh, okay, that's such a good question. First of all, it has iodine and minerals, and it's like a natural salt. Second of all, dulse has a little bit of like a seaweedy fla flavor, a little bit of a fishy seaweedy flavor. So you kind of need it in this recipe. Don't let me forget because I didn't take it out and put it on the counter. The other thing that I don't have is parsley. So I can fold that in later or tomorrow when I get it. But dulse gives it like that fishy. <laughs> you don't need it for this, then you would just call it a pate. Um... Thank you, lavender. Yeah, it's a little bit fishy. You can use it. It's not fish. <laughs> it's just seaweed, and it's so great. I love to add dulse to my romaine salads, like if I'm making um, a faux Caesar salad, you know, it mimics the anchovy, and it just gives like a, a special little flavor that I love. You want to know a secret to getting like an egg flavor? is 
the sulfur from black salt. I used to make like an egg salad. I did use, Gary, I did use oil. I used a quarter cup of oil. You don't have to use the oil. Um, I did. I'm just following a recipe I did many, many years ago. As you can imagine, I could do a ton of variations on this. Cashews, no oil, coconut oil, or I like the olive oil. Um, okay. I don't know how long that took me to chop the celery, but it's so well worth it. Okay, we have two cups of celery. And I'm, I feel like adding green onions for flair today, but we definitely want the purple onion. And let's see. One cup. So that's smart. I wrote one cup because all onions are not created equal. Imagine, like, you have a little onion, you have a big onion, you can't just say one onion. So I obviously chopped it and measured it. Yay. But I don't think anything's going to go wrong if you have too much onion or not enough. Yeah, I think that um, the healthiest thing to cook with is coconut oil. It doesn't change its molecular structure. So it doesn't clog the arteries. I've never cooked with avocado oil. I don't know if that's good for the arteries or not. We want this onion fine. <laughs> we want fine onion. And I might chop it a little further. You want to use a sharp knife, you guys. You cut yourself if you don't have a sharp knife. You also want to claw your hand. And you also, because onions can be slippery, you also want to um, definitely have a sharp knife. And I'm a huge fan of this Kyocera ceramic. If there's any, all of my kitchen favorites are on my, most of them are on my website under Dara's Kitchen Faves. Okay, so we can, it looks pretty fine. I'm pretty pleased, but give it a little extra chop. We'll measure it. What did I say? One cup of red onion. Oh, yeah. So it was about half of a large onion, one small onion. I'll throw the extra in. Look how beautiful. In. Um, I don't know that I'll need the green onion. I'm going to miss the parsley flakes. It just adds such a pretty flaky green bit. Um, I would say I used about a half a stalk, a half a bunch of celery. And let's move this out of the way. Is there anything else I need to cut? No, I don't think so. I don't know if we need the green onion. Let's keep it traditional. I do like to have a clean working space. I think it's important. It promotes creativity when you have a nice space to work. And that's good enough for now. I think I'm going to have to get the black pepper and the um, dolls. Hmm. I had dolls flakes. Who knows where they are? I'm about to organize. I just organized part of my pantry, um, certain drawers, and then I organized certain other things. But there's a way, there's a ways to go in here. Let's give it one second to look because they will be helpful if they're already pulsed. Um, it comes in a little jar. I saw it somewhere, but I don't think I saw it in here. This is ridiculous. This seriously has to be sorted out. Mm. One more time in here. Oh, you could add mustard. Would be fun. Mustard would be very nice. A little bit. Um, where are you, dolls? 
you guys miss me, I'm coming back. <laughs> Not in here. Huh. Well, no problem. We can cut up and I'll show you how to do that. I have this dulse, which this is the dulse that I favor for my romaine, for my salads. I throw it in salads all the time. And then I just take a chunk of it and I get a scissor, which of course you're going to have to hold on. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Here we go. So, I'm back. Avocado oil would be great in here. Yes, walnut, avocado. I wouldn't cook with those. So how much dulse did this call for? Just so you know, it called for um, hmm. Yes, two tablespoons. So we're going to estimate. Hi. Ah, my Paris bowl, Laura B. The exact, well, not the exact one, but the sizes are on my website. And I did pay attention and measured. I think it's like 10 or 11 inches across the top. But I have the one I use for salad, and then I have the bigger bowl. Um, I can't measure it right now. I don't need to because it's on my website. Okay. Cut up some more. This really makes it like the tuna-y thing. Do you guys know I love cutting my hair? My hair was way longer at the start of this situation. I like cutting things. <laughs> it's so soothing. Yeah, I did measure the bowl, and it's there on my website. And it's so great. They're not expensive. They're enamel. They're light. So I like to travel when I go camping. Um, I need to have a big bowl. You need to have a big bowl because you need to eat an enormous amount of greens, and you need something to mix it in, which I find that Airbnbs don't tend to have big bowls, and I think that's a mistake. <laughs> I think you need to offer your guests big bowls. I've been in situations where I've had to use like a large stock pot. Um, John G is in the house. Grey Poupon would be so good in here. Dijon, mustard, uh, horseradish. That's like adding horseradish. Um, I think I, I don't know if my mustard walked out the door. It may have. Okay, that's good enough for now. I can always add. Um, uh, how did I cut my hair? I put it in two ponytails down here, more to the back because I wanted the front longer even and just chopped it. And then as time went on, I just snipped it where it looked a little longer than other places. Um, I cut it blunt at the bottom. Thank you. And I think this is good. Let's see if this is... Yeah, because after I take it out of here and mix it in there, I can't blend it anymore. So let me just address the situation. I was thinking of doing a bang tutorial because I did cut mine, but they need to be a little bit shorter. I'm feeling like this is a little dry. So well, that's pretty good. I don't know if I want to mess with success. Mm. I'm going to add more lemon, believe it or not. Well, we only used, we didn't quite full use the um, three lemons, so it's going in. And then I blend it, and it will make it creamier. Definitely more lemon. One more. One more time. Oh, you came in late, Robin. This is, um, we're making my famous not tuna. My not tuna recipe, and in here is, well, you probably know that, in here is a cup of almonds that I soaked overnight, rinsed and drained, 
and a cup of sunflower seeds. I love how I'm squeezing this large thing into this little, it's working though. <laughs> Ta-da. Yeah, so we have now have two and a half lemons. I want it lemony with a twang. The notification didn't pop up, Yesenia. I don't know. I took, I, I took down advertisements because I didn't want you guys to have to deal with it. And after I did that, my subscribers, I noticed, and I don't really look at numbers, they went down by like 450. And I was like, maybe YouTube wants you to, okay, three lemons. YouTube wants you to have um, the ads. So I think we're putting just one ad in the beginning. Okay, there you go. Moroccan Method Channel has good tutorials. Yeah, this is good. It's been years since I made this, like seriously, and I miss it, and I'm so excited. Perfect consistency, like perfect. See? And that way you can mold it. You don't want it too wet because sometimes when I'm feeling fancy, I mold it. I use a little um, mold, which I'll show you. I feel a little claustrophobic here. I really hate having too much stuff around. It's like, it's very Virgo. My Virgo rising is like, no. I clean up when I make dinner. I clean up as I go. So by the time I eat, I only have to do the dish, the one dish and the fork, or the two dishes and the two forks. And it's so nice. Then I can make a hot tonic, which I really want to do today. For those of you who want to stay on the line when this is all done, I want to make a tonic. Okay. This is a real tutorial, you guys. Before, we were just hanging out, but we're serious now. <laughs> I'm getting serious. I got my headset. I may want to add the green onion. I did take out. I'll, ta I'll tell you later. Okay, so this is gonna go in to that. So did I, ah, black pepper. So let's check and see. We had the almonds, the sunflower seeds, the two cups celery, the one cup red onion finely chopped, one quarter cup olive oil, four tablespoons of fresh parley, don't have, but it would go in here, not in here, the whole thing would be green. Two tablespoons of very finely chopped dulse. It was not finely chopped, but it will do. Three lemons juiced. Salt, I would go lower on the salt. I used to, but I'll know more because we're mixing in a lot of water. Right now, this is too salty. This alone would be a great pate. If you did, you know, just to have this and put it on something would be delicious. Carry on, Dara. Salt, black pepper. That's coming. We did do the garlic and we didn't need water. So I have this beautiful, I never had one before, and this one is my favorite because the bottom opens and I can add different kinds of peppers. But this is made by Dream Form, and I love it. So I'm just going to go crazy because I think it needs a lot of black pepper, and um, I call, it called for a quarter teaspoon. That's good. Ta-da! Now we're going to mix. Let's mix. I know I did the ad-free channel for you guys, but I think it does something to your, uh, put it in. It does something that's not good. Capricorn sun, Virgo rising here. Yours truly, your husband is too. I'm Taurus north node. I have a Cancer moon. You'll know me by my Cancer moon because all, it's all the nurturing and the mothering and I make everybody comfortable, but I am definitely a goat. <laughs> Judy, you're finally getting out of bed to go soak on. Look how gorgeous, you guys. I feel so pleased. We do have an ancient vintage, it's not even vintage, but um, a retro Dara video where I'm making this, and I'm sure I had long red hair, and, but this is now. We're doing this now in real time. I used to have to film, then edit, then post, and now I get to just be live with you guys, which is so much more fun, so much more fun. 
like a hundred zillion percent more fun. And I had fun before, but this is like next level. Ta-da! I have my cute little flower stack towel. At night, I give myself the fun of drawing at the Doobie Universe. I'm inviting you on Instagram. You can join. There's these little doobies that show up on masks and towels and paper. Okay, here we go. Some good hearty bread. I do have this gorgeous, it's not raw, but it's gluten-free vegan bread, and it's just so beautiful. So what I'll do is slice this and put it all in the freezer because I won't be able to eat that. It's from Air One. You could get vegan Mario. There's so many brands available now. Back in the day, I had to make my own raw bread, which was time-consuming, but lovely, but time-consuming. I don't need it to be raw. A little thin slice of... Well, it's not going to hurt you. Um... You like the Doobie towels? Thank you. Doobie. It could be D-U-B-I-E because of my last name. They're little doobies. But oh, this is so good. Um, we'll have to taste it. Doobies. They're little doobies. It's the Doobie universe. And I have a whole studio dedicated. And I'm drawing on paper and using my iPad. And I am drawing on shoes and masks. And it's, my, it's really fun for me. They're little guardians of nature. Oh, yeah. Definitely less salt. So go one teaspoon and see how it goes for you. <laughs> it's salty, but it's still delicious. I feel like it needs a little more dull, so I'm going to look for that. The dulse powder is finer, so it goes throughout the whole thing. Plus, this is going to marry itself, as my mom used to say. It will blossom and the flavors will marry together and kept in a little glass container. It will be so good. Perfect. What about the granola? The granola turned out amazing. Turned out beautiful. I have the new iPad Pro. You're fasting and hungry, Sheila. This is not what you want to watch. So now I'm going to show you how to I'm going to need another plate. Let's get this. We do need parsley. I feel very upset, but I will, we will live. We could do green onions on top. That could be fun. This romaine that I just pulled out is really nice and dirty. There's soil in it. <laughs> okay. I really dislike eating uh, romaine right after I have um, washed it because then it's wet. I don't have a salad spinner. I usually wash the romaine, let it, you know, the water shake out, and then I wrap it in a towel and I put it in the fridge and then it's dry and crispy because the water is just going to dilute your dressing. But this will be fine for our presentation purposes. I am really into snacks. I eat snacks all day. I don't eat big fat meals. Um, it's not that great for my constitution. I eat it like to, I've always been a snacker ever since I was little. Uh, relish, I don't use relish, but you could. So this is something that I've had for years. It's a cylinder. And then we'll just put a thing. And then, are you ready for this fun? If you're having a party or you want to make somebody like a beautiful meal and you want it to look really special, then you can... And you don't want to eat an enormous amount of this. That's not the point. It's like... Let's see if this worked. It did work. That's beautiful, right? It could come out a little cleaner. So if I chilled that, it would be a little bit easier to work with. Then I put... Then I wash my hands. No, not. 
Where's my doobie tail? Here, okay. So now you put an, uh, oh, um, tomato is so nice with this. I would crisscross two leaves and then I would put a dollop Of, remember we made this dill and onion dip the other day, which the only reason it came out thin is because I had soaked and drained and then frozen the cashews, which makes the whole thing so unbelievably creamy. Um, but the only problem is, is that it added more water to my situation, so the whole thing came out thinner. Um, well, that's silly me. I have another knife here. So then, I want this part of the onion. I want a little green on top. You could put a little pepper on top, a little red pepper. Definitely parsley needs to be in here, 100%. Maybe some chili pepper flakes for color. Um, a little sprinkle of cayenne for fun. I don't know. We can just, and there's a fun snack for someone. This is a lot of fat. So <laughs> what normally this much would be on a whole bed of greens or you eat half of the amount or you just take a little. And it's really, to me, things like this are to get the greens um, in, look it, you just go like that. You keep it in the fridge and then you go like that. That's just a little bit. And then you fold it and there's your snack. So, look, some people who have been eating raw for a long time, you end up wanting to naturally eat lighter, so you don't eat a lot of fat. But if you're going from, like, cheeseburgers and pizza to this, you might need to sustain yourself a little bit with heavier foods. So, I have not tried not tuna with chickpeas, but that would be lighter. Um, when I went to raw food school of nutrition and raw food uh, culinary school, Beans weren't part of our deal because beans are a starch and a protein, which you're supposed to keep, you know, your starches and protein separate. They, they make like gas, which we know. Um, I have found that when I'm cooking beans, if I use asafoetida, otherwise known as hing, it's, a, it's an a Indian spice, that reduces bloating. Um, so I have not done that. It wouldn't be raw to use the chickpeas, but totally legit. Sometimes it makes sense to you to cook. Like if you're making a raw carrot soup, it's going to be a little grainy or it'll need a little fat to like smooth it and emulsify it. But if you cook the carrots and then blend them, you don't need to have the fat. So it's really up to you how you want to go. So lower the fat, have less of it, have just a little spoonful of it. This is a lot for this one. So there would be a crisscross. It would be like three or four under this. Fold it up and you're good to go. So how is everybody liking that? What do you think? Are you gone, have you gone to go soak your sunflower seeds? <laughs> it's delicious. I'm going to make a tonic. Yeah. Watch this. We want less fat. She's right. Mary's right. It came out a little big. I should use <laughs> the little, um, watch this. Now this is how much on one piece of romaine. That's more relatable and still delicious. Of course, if you need more, put more. I put a little more. <laughs> and then you go like that. Oop, sticker. And then you're good to go. And this is so healthy. Um, the sunflower seeds in it make it lighter. If you use all almonds, it's heavy. Sunflower seeds are lighter and easy to digest. So it's tonic time. Are you wanting to hang out so we can stop the raw, the, the food video now? Angela, um, tomato soup is lovely. So I, you don't have to soak the cashews. They'll be creamy, but... 
cashews get creamier when you soak them for a couple of hours, two to four hours. Sunflower seeds, I always soak for four hours. And almonds, you have to soak longer, eight, at least eight hours. So yes, cashews you don't have to worry about so much. But this is delicious. I am super pleased. And it's going to go in a glass container, a pretty little glass container. And it will be served to Herbie. And all is well. Yay. So, and I'm really happy that my, um, my headset's working. And you guys, we get to hang out in the kitchen again. And I'm all, all set up. So it is tonic time. Let's make Unless you guys have to go. I need one. I want one. And it's not going to be super caffeinated. I'll use just a little bit of cacao. You're going to make the tonic with me? Good. That's the idea, is to inspire you guys to get going in the kitchen. It's really the highest form of self-love. Um, it really is the first thing. It's not everything. There's so much to do, but it's the first thing that we should be doing. I want to share something fun. Let's see if it's in here. No, I used them all. Um, I'm getting more. I ordered more Nature's Bees Wraps. Um, they cover... And it's natural covering, and I just love them. So we'll cover that later. Um, cleaning up while the water is. Definitely can't make a tonic in this mess. There's no way. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Well, if you were here, and you are here, this is what I'd be doing. <laughs> and then I may need to pull out some food tomorrow and just make stuff with whatever I have. Because then you end up with um, it's just extra stuff, if you, and you need to know what to do with it, and you need to be intuitive and creative. I'm back in the kitchen, Kate. Well, then eat cooked dinners. Eat raw during the day. You want a coffee tonic, Gary? We are having a almost coffee tonic and a coffee tonic substitute. Coffee substitute tonic. All right, we are cleaned up and good to go. I think my little carafe is dirty, so I have to use the big one, but that's fine. So let me go get my ingredients. Smoothies, a wonderful dinner. Hi, everybody. Okay, let's see what we got. We got the mother load of dandy blend. I had a satisfying experience of filling this jar with dandy blend hmm. well I could either draw tonight or have another fun activity and clean these drawers which are abominable let's have a this one looks nice but maybe that's too sleepy time Definitely Ho Sho Wu. Because of Ho Sho Wu, I only have like one gray hair and I'm 53. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's probably hereditary. Maybe it's all the raw food or all the healthy food. Okay, so now we have Dandy Blend and Cacao. As you can see, I'm running low on cacao. I used to buy it from the Longevity Warehouse. I think that's where I'll get it again. I have Ho Sho Wu, which is like named after Mr. Ho Sho Wu, and he started having this, and his hair went from gray to black, so legend says. So we are going to, oh, Gary, you're my age. We're going to get, we're going to get, we're only going to use one tablespoon of cacao. Normally, I would use two. It doesn't really keep me up, though. 
Matcha will keep me up. Coffee will keep me up. We're going to use two tablespoons of Dandy Blend, which is roasted chicory and dandelion. And I'm going to use Awaken the Shen, which is peaceful spirit. It nourishes and opens the heart, calms emotional stress, is emotionally uplifting, and nurtures the spirit. Doesn't that just sound divine right now? Yes, it's kind of gray outside. I do want to get out for a little walk. So one teaspoon for this one. You guys know I don't really measure. You know that, right? I wing it. Measuring today. I pulled out all my spoons back in the day when I was making recipes and I was a chefing. I always had my spoons out in a container and then lists of things I needed to get on my whiteboard. So apparently I'm back, back in the kitchen. Aw, he ate a raw cookie. That's so cute. So now we definitely need a pinch of salt. This is from Dust Ceramics. I love it. And we're going to need some sweet... I put in Awake in the Shen, but I didn't put in Ho Sho Wu. I always use Reishi, but I did have a tonic with Reishi, but you can't really have too much Reishi. And I'm telling you, if I could find it, it's seriously a problem in this drawer. <laughs> if I had a second camera, I would show you and you would laugh. You would be like, oh no, Dara, that is so not you. Um, so this has to happen like tonight. Sometimes I just put on music and I go for it. And here's the thing. When you give attention to the things that matter, they come alive. And they get love. When you do that, you're just putting love into the things that surround you. If they don't matter, then they shouldn't be there, right? Like, it, this thing is bothering me. If something in your house doesn't warrant your attention and your love, then it shouldn't be there. So, we need sweet monk fruit and a little bit of coconut sugar left. I'm going to use that because then I could wash this and put something else in it. Sweeten to taste. Um, and then, oh my gosh, you guys, I have the most gorgeous, oh, this is so good. What this is, is cashew almond milk with maple syrup, cinnamon, and vanilla, and a pinch of salt. It's so good, and I'm going to steam it. But for those of you who don't have this, because this took soaking the almonds and blending the cashews in with the other ingredients, it's such a treat. I do encourage you to make it. I made an almond cow video. If you need me to make an almond milk video or a nut or seed milk video without the almond cow, I'm happy to do that. But I think, does everybody know how to do that now? And in a pinch, you don't need a nut milk bag. If you want to make milk, and let's say you, you realize you want something that's creamy, you want a milk, hemp doesn't need to be strained. Um, cashews don't need to be strained, so you can quickly make a cashew milk. Just so you know. The tonic that's good for post-workout sore muscles is a tonic herb called eucomia, and it's a bark, and it's really good for joints. Um, I'm trying to think about muscles. I'm not sure. Look on Jing Herb site. I love reishi mushrooms, and I love the rain, Gary. The Hosho Wu and all of my... H-E-S-H-O-U, Wu. This comes from my favorite. There's two favorite companies. One is Jing Herbs, and when I buy in bulk, I buy from Jing Herbs, so you can get a Dara discount. And then when I'm on the go, and sometimes at home, I use Four Sigmatic Dara discount also. Those are my two companies, and I love them both. If you didn't have the milk, that's what I was saying, add a little titch of coconut oil, and it will make it creamy. Are we missing anything? No, we are not. Maybe a little vanilla. 
No, I already have vanilla in my milk, so we're good. And then I just add the hot water. I have to plug in. Add the hot water. And then I get to draw, I get to go downstairs. Back in the day when I made videos, I would then have to clean up the kitchen, which I still have to do. And then I would have to set this all up. Then the lighting, everything. Then I'd film it. Then I'd have to clean up the kitchen and edit and then upload. And it was like, I didn't go to bed till like, oh, that's a lot of water. I didn't go to bed till, that's a lot of water. I meant to add less. That's okay. It might need a little more cacao. Um, I wouldn't go to bed till like 12 o'clock at night. And now I just get to go live, clean up the kitchen, and then carry on. Um, lid, where are you? Probably in here. Yes, you are. Okay. Ta-da. Let's have a tonic together. Close your ears. Close your ears. <laughs> And that is how easy. If I want the milk really frothy, this is a Capresso frother. I think it's on my website. If I want it frothier, um, I add a titch of oil and then I press the frother twice. So it, it gives extra time. Um, here we go. Some of the milk, it's not very frothy, but I don't care. It's the creaminess and flavor. Can you see it? <sighs> Look what we did. We made dinner and dessert. Delicious. It's very light. It's not heavy on anything. I think a little less water would, this is very light and lovely. So there you have it. Big hugs, everybody. Is there anything else you want to ask me before I hang up? I'm going to show you one more time, the not tuna. Let's see. There it is. There, do you see it? It's beautiful. So you can make that. You're so welcome. I'm so glad, <laughs> Dara Muse. It's my Taurus North note that needs to have beautiful pottery and things to drink out of and the food needs to be beautiful and everything needs to feel good and flowery and lovely. It might be raining here too. So cheers, everybody. Get your not tuna on, get your tonic on, and definitely get your greens on. Those are the fluffy dollops. That's a hemp mayo we can do another time. <laughs>